Enjoy watching this video and feel free to leave a like and subscribe. We do undercover investigations as well and we go to the nice family-friendly farms that have like all the high welfare standards and it's all the same bullshit, you know. It's, it's, all, a mess, it's, it's all a facade. What's the ethically a significant difference yeah, between us and them that uh, justifies treating them differently? What is it about a pig that makes it okay to do that to them, to gas them, to slit their throat and not us or dogs? What is yeah. it? Which trait is it? Yes. And, and there is no trait because what we all have in common is our sentience, our subjective experience of life. You have your own view on your world. Nobody will ever know how your life was through your eyes. Nobody will ever know. And it's the same for them, right? And this is all what it boils down to. It doesn't matter how intelligent someone is, or how they walk, how they talk, how they look, how they feel, right? But that they can feel and that they can suffer, that's the thing that we have to focus on. What we have in common with them, and it's that we can feel that we're here, that we are someone. Yes. Not yes. just like walking vegetables, you know? They're not, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Even though also, yes, also when it comes to plants also, it's like they are also sentient beings and so on. So it's like to be respectful in general, I think, in uh, nature and also to treat uh, others like our peers. Yes. You know? It's like some yeah. level of... Uh, we, we just happen to be, in case technically have more brain. Well, we are uh, cognitively and technologically superior, that's true, yeah. but that doesn't give us the right to oppress others just because yeah, we can, me. right? Might does not make right. Yes. And yes. also about the plants. Plants are not sentient because they don't have a central nervous system, a brain pain receptors, you know. You have that and pigs and chicken and dogs and cows and I and fish and everyone has that. But plants don't have it. They're not sentient, they're not conscious beings, but they're intelligent, for example. But my smartphone is also intelligent and it reacts to stimuli just as plants, you know. Okay, but there's yeah. a difference. They, they don't have a subjective experience of life, right? When I cut a plant in half, I have two plants. I can propagate those plants. I can put the one part in water and it will grow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, yes. But when I cut an animal in half, their experience is gone. They die. They're dead. You see? So it's not the same. Yeah, it's not the same. It's not course. the same, yes. And so the question is, is anything holding you back from going vegan now? Because you seem to have vegan values already and it's just yeah. a question of aligning them with your actions, right? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you something more that maybe maybe you could uh, tell me your perspective. Yes. Maybe it will help me. Yes, shoot. Yeah, I, I grew in an environment where they, we are educated like uh, that meat is a fundamental source of, protein. of uh, proteins and other substances and uh, yes and so basically I've, uh, I've been growing basically eating eating some meat but also uh, eating milk derived products and so on and that has uh, always been considered uh, a normal and uh, I, I wouldn't know if uh, like exactly the truth about whether these substances are something that we really need we yes. can't get from anywhere else yes and me inside myself it's like I, I feel that uh, for example eating meat uh, consumes much more energy it's uh, like uh, to some extent I can say that I can think that uh, it's a more of adaptation for us to eat meat than uh, not our essential food like well, well, let me start there that yes. first of all, the, the human animal itself is an opportunistic omnivore. So we can, of course, eat some meat here and then we can survive. We won't die, but we're not carnivores, so we don't need it, right? We Like, I haven't eaten meat in over 20 years, but I'm still here. Oh, 20, huh? So it's possible. So many vegetarians and vegans, of course, all over the globe that are living proof that you don't need it. Because how is protein made? Where is it made? Uh, this I'm not sure. Uh, Plants exactly. create uh, yeah. amino acids and they form protein. You mean, so you mean that? Sorry, you mean that basically the proteins are derived like we can find it in the animals, but because they found it already from the plants. Yes, absolutely. And all plants contain protein, all of them. And you can get all nutrients from a plant-based diet. The only thing that you have to supplement, but also non-vegans have to supplement, is B12. Uh, we have to take a supplement, but they also all get supplemented B12, all of these animals. So you can take it directly too. The B12 supplement is something that we should all take, you know, so because most people that are B12 deficient are non-vegans. So, so we should all take it nevertheless. 
Uh, it's like yod in salt. Do you know the yod? Uh, uh, yes, me I eat uh, already kind of 90% vegetarian. It's a transition, it's yeah. But, but, uh, do, you, do you think from the victim's perspective that, that there's room for like would you rather be exploited or not like is there any room in between like from their no, perspective no, it's not acceptable any exp any exploitation is yeah not acceptable. you see like from their perspective yeah. it's just not and we wouldn't accept that in the human context of course it's better to hit your your wife only five times instead of seven times but it would be morally preferable to not hit her at all right yeah, sure it's sure. the same with these animals right and now that you're educated the question is how many animals from this moment on should be bred into existence in your name, exploited in your name, enslaved and killed in your name? Zero or more than zero? What do you wish for? Zero. You can do if it from... If you do negatives, uh, it's zero. Yeah, and uh, you know, you can do it from now on. You can boycott that by being vegan, by, by rejecting animal exploitation. Uh, but uh, how every one of us can contribute to the cause? But then I, I'm, I'm still a bit, uh, I, I mean, I'm totally, I'm totally aware that this must be fought, but I, I think this must be fought also uh, at a higher level. I, I know now some, uh, about some, for example, journalists in my own country that have documented about the practices, they also made some movies about it or also journalistic reports. Yeah. Because I think it's, it's kind of like, okay, now it's a much more serious topic here, but uh, for example, plastic, plastic production, no? it's also yeah. envir environmentally bad because of uh, uh, different reasons. And um, basically, we should uh, tackle it from the source. Is, is your question like if there is a way to get animal products without exploitation? Is that the question? Or ah, no, it's like do you also, as activists, like, as activists in general, yeah, yeah. Uh, also tackle the problem for the origin? Like uh, ah, exposing. I see. I yes. see, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, we do undercover investigations as well and we go to the nice family-friendly farms that have like all the high welfare standards and it's all the same bullshit, you know, okay. so it's everything, everything, like they, they, they want to fool you and they put these labels on so that you feel good about buying these products, they don't care about animals, they are selling dead body parts and animal excavations, they make money with the body of exploited animals, so don't get fooled, everything that, that is trying to sell you the good story of well they're treated nicely and so on it's it's all a mess it's, it's all a facade you know and even if we treat those animals nicely in the end they're still considered property a commodity they're still considered a resource uh, they, we objectify them you know but they're subjects and that's the main thing you know and so there is no good way to do the wrong thing what we think what helps the most is a grassroots movement so we talk to people that create the demand and then you talk with your friends and family and then they talk with their friends and family and this is how grassroots movement work you know it has to come from the people from us sure. like if society doesn't shift their view on animals and if we don't go on eye level with them and respect them the bare minimum not to exploit them the bare minimum not to kill them the it's just the bare minimum. If we don't get to this point, slaughterhouses will be here forever and animals will never have rights. And that's not okay. Don't you agree? Yeah, I agree. So are you vegan from now on? Yeah, yeah. I... You don't have to promise to me, but to them. Because yeah. as long as you're not living vegan, you're complicit. Mm -hmm. And as far as I can tell, this is not who you want to be, right? Yeah, yeah, you tell right. You yes. know what? I know it can be very overwhelming to think like, oh my God, vegan from the on, this is so much. I have to change yes. my entire life. I know, I know, I know. I've been yes, there too. Yes. But let me give you an advice to calm you a bit down in, in that sense. First of all, just think from it, about it from moment to moment. So your next meal is a vegan one today. Easy, you're in Berlin, you can do it. It's so easy, right? Just the next meal is a vegan one. And once you've done that, you breathe in, breathe out. You've not exploited animals, feels great. And then you just go to the next meal, okay? And also, there's a documentary, it's called Dominion. Okay. It's a two-hour documentary and it will explain and show you just the standard practices all around the globe for different animal exploitation industries. So not only for food, but also for clothing, entertainment, animal testing and the pet industry. Because veganism is not a diet. Veganism is a moral philosophy. It means that you reject the commodity status of animal, the property status, and you reject the exploitation of other sentient beings. Why? Because they can feel like you and I. If you don't want to be in a slaughterhouse, if you don't want this to be done to you or your family, 
don't don't do unto others what you don't want to be done unto yourself. Yeah, That's sure. veganism in a nutshell, right? I see. Yeah, and then there's much misinformation about that because uh, what yeah, most people don't like, know. I know this is why we do this, and uh, most people are not aware, and most people associate veganism with a diet when this is just the logical conclusion. Like when you understand the philosophy, and when you are on eye level with the other animals, the logical conclusion is to not eat them or wear them or exploit them for entertainment or any other purpose. You know, um, because you don't want to be in, in their position, and why why do that? to them when you have the option to just not do it at all. Yeah, yeah, sure. Right? Yeah. I, I guess you're against racism and sexism and stuff like that, Absol I assume? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Why are we against these things? Because they involve victims, right? And because those victims are sentient, we can all feel, and we should not morally exclude others based on their gender, based on their skin color. And when we discriminate them based on their species, that's when we call it speciesism. So if you are against discrimination, oppression, slavery, if you are against racism, sexism, ableism, all these isms, you also have to be against speciesism because it's just the same. It's, it's just the same. Oh, you're different. This is why I oppress you. It doesn't make any sense. Why petting dots but uh, sending pigs into gas chambers, right? Yeah, yeah. It's oppression wherever you see it from. Absolutely. It's like, uh, Absolutely. From. And then so. when we know about it, we have to boycott it. It's just what it is. So yes. easy. Yeah. Okay, vegan okay, from now on. Have a wonderful <laughs> vegan life, okay? Bye-bye.